All right, y'all have a big project today. As you can see, I have a really big box. <laughs> I've been waiting for this box for several days. It's just been, I've been using the tracking for FedEx. This came FedEx. I've been using the tracking and it's just been all over the place. And I really wasn't sure or not. I didn't know if it was going to make it today because it kept saying that it was somewhere else. And then it told me it was another place. And I was like, okay, well, I'm just not going to get it till next week. And it came today. So it's a really big box. My sister and I had a time getting it in here. Uh, looks like uh, Miss Boo is going to help me put it together today. She loves boxes. <laughs> Absolutely loves boxes. So we'll have to fix it up where she can play in this box for a few days. And there you hear Shaggy tiptoeing down the hallway. There he comes. He's got to come down and help me too. So looks like I'll have plenty of help today. Uh, they actually, on this box, they actually had the straps taped, like all the way around, so you couldn't even get your fingers or your hand underneath the strap to be able to carry it with the, with the tote straps, which I thought was kind of odd, but I guess they were afraid it would get hung on a machine or something. I don't know, but i never seen that before. So I just cut me a little hole, handle hole right there. <laughs> That's all I knew to do, because I had to get it moved. But it's pretty heavy. It weighs around 100 pounds in the box. Of course there's a lot of packing and stuff in there too but uh, I'm gonna get started on putting this thing together and I'll show you guys what is in the box and there is the handy dandy instructions I get to uh, use my exploded diagram uh, expertise again <laughs> this one may be a little bit more uh, more in depth or maybe a little bit more explosion involved in this one I don't know but we'll see what happens <laughs> and oh I was going to show you before this is what the area looks like now I've actually been working in here a lot trying to get the area where I'm going to put this big old thing and I went ahead and did my Christmas tree I moved some stuff over on my computer desk over there um, of course, if you watched my video on remodeling and turning my little apartment room into a cozy log cabin, uh, I love it. I still love everything about it. It's just beautiful, amazing. I love it. And uh, all my little dumpster diving finds from the apartment complex. I found this cool corner shelf there. I found that really pretty white cabinet right there out at the dumpster. It's perfect condition. Absolutely beautiful. The only thing I could find wrong with it was, you know, the little plastic things that stick in the holes on the side that hold your shelves up. It was missing one of those. So what I do, I just took a nail and put it in the hole and shelf works just perfect on top of it. It's probably actually more secure anyway. So there's my Christmas tree. And oh, look what I did here. This was, this was just a, a spur of the moment idea. I had some extra rock left over and some of the shower curtain, um, the wood grain shower curtain, and I decided to make this. This is a styrofoam chest that when I lived in Anchorage, Mom and I ordered uh, honey baked ham <laughs> uh, for our, I think it was our Christmas. I think it was for Christmas. It was either for Thanksgiving or, oh, yeah, it was for Thanksgiving. And then I uh, had enough left over, we put it in the freezer and we had it for. Christmas also I ordered a honey baked ham and it had to be shipped all the way to Anchorage from the lower 48 so they shipped it in this big really thick styrofoam cooler um, that put, had, had dry ice in it and when I got it it was still like really really cold like it just came out of the freezer so if you ever wonder if you order a honey baked ham if it'll get to you uh, in good order Mine mine took like five days to get there, I think. And like I said, it came like it had just came out of the freezer. It was perfect. I ordered like the whole meal. I had green beans and all kinds of stuff. And it actually came in two coolers. It came in this, this one and a, a smaller one. Now this one's got all my cookbooks and everything in it. So I didn't want to fix it to where I couldn't open it and get into my cookbooks if I need them. I don't use cookbooks very often. But so you see it's just a... It's just a styrofoam cooler, and I covered it with that, and because I always keep my Christmas tree on there, so 
I, color, I covered it to make it look like rock and wood. And this is my Christmas tree. I just have it in a pot. And I glued some pretty snowflakes and stuff on it. There's my Christmas tree. Um, it's really pretty. I'll show you that later on though, once I get all this fixed. But I just wanted to show you what it looks like now before I put in the very cool... Uh, very cool thing that I just ordered that I'm about to put together. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started putting that together and um, see how it goes. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave that big giant box out in the hallway and just bring in a few parts at a time. Whatever I need, I gotta look over the exploded diagram first, though. <laughs> all right. Well, I have my tools. I didn't come with any tools at all. And I have my exploded diagram booklet. It's a pretty thick one here. So I've got that exploded diagram and all my tools. And I guess I'm ready to start pulling in a few of the pieces and putting them together a few at a time. I really should move all that stuff out of the way first, though. Maybe I'll do that because once I get it built, there's not going to be a whole lot of floor space in here to move stuff around out of my way. So I'll just go ahead and pile all of that stuff on my bed. My room is a complete mess right now. But I guess you got to have a little destruction before you can have some construction. <laughs> so that's what i got to do is uh, destruction, and then I'll fix it. All right, y'all. I got it out of the box. As you can see, this one was packed, packaged really well. It had a lot of styrofoam in there. To keep everything safe it had flat pieces between stuff it had big cubes and chunks and all kinds of stuff in there between everything just to keep it from getting scratched or anything like that I think every single piece had styrofoam and this uh, cloth stuff around it or between it so that's a really big plus with this brand and I'll tell you guys all about the brand and everything like that after I get it all built <laughs> and see what it's like. So what I did was I laid out everything in my room here. Like I said, my room's a mess right now, but uh, it's a construction site. It's a cone zone. <laughs> so what I did was I laid everything out. I got my hardware right there. And then this is another really neat thing of this stuff. It's, it's numbered really well. So you got one and two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen and fifteen sixteen seventeen and this is the this is fifteen here this is the base so you got the base and then sixteen and seventeen so what I do is I just laid them all out in order and that's right there is um, uh, the F. <laughs> what do you think F stands for? Hmm. I don't know. It says ha. Ha. Oh, I can't see it. I can't focus in on it, but it's kind of dark in here. But I've got my guinea light on full blast, but it's still kind of dark in here. I like it that way. So, uh, yeah, so we got all our parts and pieces and everything. So we're going to get to work on it and see what happens. Alright, so I have all my tools ready. I have my booklet here. And all the instructions. I have all my hardware. And uh, it comes with a I get a 10% discount off my next purchase from the company. Uh, you also have a 30 day money back guarantee if you don't like it or if it tears up or anything like that. In 90 days you can send it back. And um, it also has a warranty on it, some of the parts and stuff. And let's see here. It says it, says it takes about 60 minutes. And, and there's all the parts to it and the list of parts. There's uh, 17 different parts. Now there's two of some of the parts, so there's probably actually about 20 parts total. 
well, that's not counting the hardware parts. There's all the hardware parts. And we're going to look and see what we need to get first. It says it calls. You can use a drill, I suppose, but I'm just going to use old-fashioned elbow grease and a hammer. <laughs> and if first comes the worst, I'll uh, use some duct tape. <laughs> if you can't fix it with a hammer and duct tape, it probably can't be fixed. That's what I've always heard. <laughs> Alright, so let's see here. What else? Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and, and get started with our first part. I was going to set this down here somewhere where I could focus it on what I'm doing, but I don't think that's going to work. So I might just have to put some pieces together and let you see what it looks like and then... Um, should be able to see me putting the bigger parts together but the small parts I'll just have to kind of show you as I go along on that and there is a whole bag of them so. and it looks like I do start out with um, piece 4 and piece 12 and one of those little things <laughs> uh, I don't know the technical names to anything anymore I used to know all the screws bolts nuts Dowels, all those kinds of things, rivets. I used to know all the terminology of all the different uh, pieces and um, hardwares and stuff like that because I used to work at Piper Aircraft and I built airplane parts and I was a um, floater, which meant I worked in all different departments of the factory. I worked if someone called in sick, I worked in their place, whatever department they were in. So I basically learned how to build a complete airplane <laughs> piece by piece, uh, including wiring harnesses, landing gear, wings, um, interior, all of it. I learned how to build pretty much all of it. I worked with the sheet metal. I worked with the ABS plastics. I worked on rivet machines. I worked on... Uh, dipping stuff in the hot molten um, aluminum. You know, we had to coat some of our parts with aluminum, like the wing assembly and stuff like that. So I worked on, I knew how to use the the robot arm to uh, put the stuff down into the hot lava <laughs> of aluminum. So I learned everything. I knew how to do absolutely everything in the whole factory, and I knew all the names and terminology of all little teeny tiny parts, but I don't know that anymore. Um, I can still kind of look at something and tell what size it is because I have that in my mind of what size it is. If it's quarter inch, three eighths, whatever, I can kind of look at that and tell. But, um, yeah. <laughs> and so now I'm not building an airplane. I'm just building some furniture. So here we go. All right, y'all, so I've built a lot of furniture. I worked at Best Buy, and I used to build those big solder computer desks and all sorts of things like that. I've built tons and tons of furniture and things where you have parts and pieces. And I have to say that this is the best marked bag of hardware that I've ever seen. Everything is marked so well. I showed you on the wood parts that everything has... A number on it very easy to see well this bag of accessory or hardware also is labeled very very well there's a b c d e f g h there is no i i i was like oh my gosh i'm missing the i but there is no i i looked on the diagram there's no i there's j k l m n o this is o this big long strip thing right here this is, oh, I couldn't find it either because I was looking for it in the hardware bag. Uh, but then I remembered seeing a, an O. And so I found that. So there's O, P. So everything is totally, completely marked very, very good. Um, it's got a little diagram here that shows you each, each one of them and how many they're supposed to be. Um, so yeah, I would give this a 10 out of 10 as far as uh, building 
um, markings and stuff because this is just really great. <laughs> I've had some things where you get a bag of this hardware and it's just got nuts and bolts and all kinds of things in it and no numbers, no letters, no nothing on it and you're just like, okay, where does this go? What kind of piece is this? What screw goes where? But this, um, this kit right here actually has this very, very well marked. So this one does not come with tools though. I have had pieces of furniture that come with Allen wrenches and and little screwdrivers sometimes and things like that but this one you have to have your own um, equipment your own tools in order to to build it so I'm gonna get started on building now that I've got all my parts laid out where I need them to go and this is another thing that I learned at, the, at uh, Piper was getting all your pieces ready you have the blueprint you go down the blueprint, blueprint list of things and you went into the tooling room or the hardware room and you would go in you take your little basket in there if you needed four quarter inch uh, screws and three three eighth inch nuts bolts whatever you just put them all in your little basket and then uh, you would make sure that you had everything you needed if you needed silicone or if you needed uh, adhesive or glue or anything like that you would take it all to your workstation so that you had it all right there to um, to get it because there were a few times when we'd be out of something and we would have to just put that part to the side and build something else until we could get more of what we needed in so I learned to I did do the same thing when I'm cooking I basically pull down all the spices I want to use I pull down the bowls I'm going to use utensils I'm going to use and I just have it all right there with me and then um, I don't have to worry about it I don't have to spend half my time between doing something looking for something else I just have it all right there with me so now inevitably I do lose stuff I'll lose I'll probably use, lose that screwdriver three or four times I'll lose the scissors I'll lose the hammer I'll lose my glasses I'll lose the instruction booklet I'm sure because it happens all the time it's just like when I'm doing Christmas wrapping I lose the tape I lose the scissors I lose the paper that I'm gonna use I just lose everything <laughs> and just because things get covered up things get moved somewhere else but I know that I have it all so it's right here and I'm not going to spend a lot of time looking for it so that's a good thing to do is to just like I said I have all my pieces all lined up ready to go and then my hardware is all ready to go and I can get started building and the first thing I'm going to need is um, A which I have right here a little packet of A and I'm going to need um, the wooden part 4 and 12. So I'll go over there and get those. Get those put together. And Okay, so I put the cam bolts onto the support bars. Make sure these two. And uh, when you put these together, you want to make sure that this, this light brown strip right here is upward. Um, so I got that done. These are these are cam screws. These are the kind that you put into one, and then you slide another piece onto that, and then you tighten it from the side. So I got that much of it. Okay, so now I've got the pegs. Those I've got in there, in part four and twelve, also. And then I'm going to go over there and get piece three and seven. So it looks like three goes on four and seven goes on twelve. So I'm going to go get those parts. And this is really cool because it shows you exactly the part, how many you're going to need, and where they go, and all that kind of stuff. So this is actually a pretty easy to read and follow diagram. Which is surprising. <laughs> but, uh, so. All right, so there is a warning on here about uh, different things. It says this is a permanent label. Do not remove. So I guess this is kind of like those things on the mattress. If we remove them, someone will come and take us away. <laughs> it's like on your pillow and your mattresses. Uh, so it's a warning about the thing 
tipping over, always be aware and install the tip over restraints provided. Don't exceed the maximum size of the weight of the shelf that it will hold. Don't allow children to stand, climb, or hang on drawers, doors, or shelves. Never open more than one drawer at a time. Oh, I think I've probably broken all of these rules at some point in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Place the heaviest items in the lowest drawers. All right, so uh, This label is actually really easy to peel off so I don't know I guess you can just peel it off if you want to and take the chance <laughs> All right, if you've never put in a cam bolt, let me kind of show you how to do that uh, a cam bolt is one that needs to be tightened from both ends, but um, you're only able to, once you put it together, you're only able to, you would only be able to screw it in from one side. So with the cam bolt, you, uh oh, this is kind of hard to do with one hand. Uh, you'll slide this together, making sure that you're all lined up with everything, which it is. And then you'll lay it flat and get your cam bolts. See what I do with the cam bolts. There they are. So this is a cam bolt. This is this. Uh, it's a Phillips head screwdriver. But you see, it's like it's like cut right there. So what you want to do is this is your cam bolt hole. This is where you put that other screw in there. So in order to tighten that screw to hold everything together, you'll put your cam bolt in like this. Make sure it goes down in there. And what you'll do is line up that cut part right there you'll line that up to where the screw because you see the screw is not in the middle there it's over to this end so you'll put your cam bolt in to where there's only one way this can go in so you put it in to where it goes flush and then you'll take your your screwdriver and just put it in there and just turn it till it's tight and what that does what that does is I can't really see what I'm doing, but I'm just turning that bolt, the cam bolt, with my screwdriver. You can see it a little better here. My shadow's in the way, but anyway, you'll tighten those and make sure that they're good and tight. And then that's going to hold your board in place really, really good if you tighten those cam bolts down good enough. And it only takes like a half a turn to a turn because you've got your screw turn, your bolt turned around to where it's just going to kind of screw underneath that bolt that you've got in or that screw that you've got in there. So, so I got those put in on piece number three and piece number Okay, so I got piece three and four together. Um, and I got piece seven and twelve together. And our next thing is to put the base down, which is number 15. So we're going to put number 15 down there and then I guess hook things from there. Uh, over there is my spot. I already had it ready to go. As you can see, I, I kind of ran out of <laughs> out of rock paper. So I just uh, left that spot blank because I know something's going to be sitting there anyway. So it's not a big deal. Um, I can always order some more later on. But for right now, this will work just fine. So. So with the base, it doesn't look like it matters which way you put it down there because uh, I've looked at it. Everything is exactly the same. All the holes are the same. There's not an extra hole anywhere for anything else. So it looks like the base goes, uh, let's see. Looks like the sides can go on either side. You just got to make sure that you have the support, this support beam right here. That sort support beam right there on the end. You have to make sure that that is on the front part of your base. Because I guess that's going to be where your, your doors hook to, I guess. I'm not sure. <laughs> but it looks like that, it looks like the door doesn't really matter. I'm going to try it out and see, and then I will let you know for sure if it matters which way your base Alright, so it does matter because this is the back, and it is flat. Um, so the back of it is flat, and this side 
has a nice little decorative curve to it. So that's how you can tell which part is the front and which is the back. It's got a nice little like beveled edge to the front of it. Makes it just a little bit a little bit fancier. So remember that the number on this particular one is the front. So um, but you can tell if you just look at the if you just look at it. Just trying to get it to where you can actually see it, but the back side is completely flat and the front side has like a little beveled ridge on it. So it does matter which way your base goes. Alright, so I got one side on there. As you can see, got one of the shelves on. Okay, so as you can see, I have one door on there, um, three and four, the parts three and four are on the base, and then I have my pegs and my um, cam screws in there already. So then all I have to do is put the other shelf on there and tighten down the cam screws. And I'll have both sides on there. Okay, so then we got a couple more cam screws. We've got two there and two over here. So we got the cam screws on there. And I guess the next part is going to be, let's see here. The next part is going to be preparing the other, um, looks like the attached cam bolts to the medial panels. So I got to get number six and number five and get those prepped up to put together. Okay, so it looks like it's pretty important to get uh, five and six. Right, because um, they have this notch. You can see that notch right there in the corner of it. Let's see if I can hold it up. There's a notch. See that notch right there? This is uh, number six, and five has a notch on the opposite side. So it's pretty important that you get five and six correct. Um, you just have some some cam bolts and some pegs to go in this. Um, it's, like I said, it's, it's really, really well uh, marked. So far the screw holes are good. Knock on wood. <laughs> Hopefully they, they continue that way. Um, so far no problems with anything. And um, yeah, so I'll go ahead and get a little bit more of it put together. And... Okay, so I have five, six over there and nine over here and five and six and nine are all going to connect like so I use five six and nine and put them together like that and yeah so we'll have to move back over here out of the way but um move back over here in my pre-assembly area <laughs> prefab Move over there and put these three pieces together. And again, like I said, it's very important that you make sure you know that there is a notch on the corner of each one of those. You can see there in the diagram. Um, let's see, I saw it earlier. Oh, here. You can see that they're both notched in the front. So that's going to be the front part. So six is going to go on the right and five is going to go on the left. Now I put my um, my secure brace to help brace those two boards together. Now I did run into uh, an issue where there's only one hole drilled right here and there should be one drilled right here. But uh, what I did was just took my hammer and kind of got the uh, screw started with my hammer and then it just screwed right in there. So that was no big deal. Uh, there's two of these braces. You put one there and one right there pretty simple. <laughs> so far so good still. Alright, there it is so far. Um, I did do one little thing wrong. <laughs> I put this bar right here. This bar right here 
is on actually backwards <laughs> but it's not going to make a big difference because um, I have some little cap covers that will cover um, cover the cam bolts so that's not a big deal but there it is so far looking pretty good so now I have to prep the top shelf of it and get that all ready to go on the top and then I have to um, put the doors on and all that stuff so a little bit more to do but so far it's going alright like I said that's the only that's the only mess up that I did but that's okay it'll be unique <laughs> so we won't worry about it otherwise I have to take the whole piece apart and turn it around and everything I'm not gonna worry about it because like I said I have caps decorative caps for the cam bolts now I have the top shelf prefabbed. I've got all of my um, pegs and all of my um, my, my bolts in there. So my cam bolts are all in. I'm going to put my pegs in the top up there where there's holes because it's too hard to flip this over with pegs in it because I'll just fall right out of there. So I'm going to put my pegs and the top of the frame of it and then this is we'll place right on top of it and we'll tighten our cam bolts and the top will be done okay so i got my pegs placed in the tops of the shelf there's four four brace brace shelves for the top i've got all my um all of my pegs put in there and then I've got all my cam bolts on the top itself so I'll just place that on there and then I'll put the, the cam bolt tighteners on there and we'll have the top on. It's amazing. <laughs> okay, so we got the top of it put on. That was a little tricky because you had to get like two, four, you had to get six pegs put in place to go in the holes and you had six of the, the bolts to go in there so it was kind of hard to line all of that up but it wasn't too bad I actually got it on there it took me about five minutes or so just to get it all lined up and get it put on there so now we've got to uh, put the back on it and the doors and we'll be pretty much done well except for the a special thing that goes right there that I'm really excited about. So now we're going to attach the back using 13, 14, and 15. So we're going to attach the back back here to the back of it using screws letter J. So that should be pretty easy. This should be one of the most simplest parts, I think. I hope. <laughs> we just got through the toughest part, so this shouldn't be too bad. And so far, believe it or not, I've only lost my screwdriver about 15 times. And I've only lost my bag of screws and accessories about, I don't know, 10 or 11 times maybe. And, uh... Yeah, so not too bad. <laughs> Doing pretty good here. <laughs> Look, y'all. I got the back of it on. Hard to see, I know. <laughs> I don't know why it's recording so dark. I really need a new camera. Uh, I'm looking into some, but right now, I gotta wait till I get the finances for that. <laughs> now, this was more important right now because this is going to make my room have such an amazing ambiance and I'm going to be able to do some more writing and all kinds of stuff in here. Um, I'm not putting this middle one on. I'm not putting that one on. It's sturdy enough. It's super sturdy. When I Before I put the back on it didn't feel sturdy at all. It's kind of wobbly. But now that I got the back screwed on there. And this one's really cool because most of the furniture I've always put together has just been like little tiny nails. And they really are <laughs> not that great to put a back on. So this one has actual screws, really lo pretty long screws. So uh, it keeps it on there really good and tight and it's super sturdy. 
Uh, the reason I'm not putting that one on there is because I have the rock to, to shine through there anyway. So I really don't need to put the back on. And because the back, that part of it just has this tiny little hole in the middle. And, uh, you know, when you have a video game or something plugged in there or whatever, uh, the cords, trying to stick them through that little hole just doesn't work very well. So I'm just going to leave that part of the back off because it really don't need to be on there anyway. So now all i got to do is put the front part in. And then I'll be able to show you guys what it all looks like all finished. Oh, I gotta put the doors on too. <laughs> when I get that finished, then I'll show you what it really looks like. It's gonna be amazing. Okay, now I am I'm using my favorite little bag of stuff. It has a K on it for my sweet Kyle. <laughs> my sweet beautiful Kyle. So I like this. I like that. This is the best bag out of the whole thing. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Silly Mal, but yeah. Alright, so this is the shelf brackets. Look, look you guys, look how good these shelf brackets are. They're actually metal instead of those plasticky kinds that you usually get that don't hold up like five or six pounds and they break. <laughs> so these are really nice ones. Like I said, they're actually metal. They're not they're not plastic. So those are gonna be really nice. And I'm going to put my shelves in, and then I'm going to put my doors on, and then the other, um, the other part of it. And then we'll see what it all looks like. Now we're getting ready to assemble the doors. So we've got our hinges, we've got our, there's our hinges, and we've got our magnets, and we've got uh, the other part of the magnet, the, uh, the attachment, the little bracket that um, tracks the magnet <laughs> and makes it stay closed and we got everything pre-drilled we got our holes drill drilled for our magnets we got our hole drill holes drilled for our hinges we got our dr holes drilled for our handles so we've got everything so far I have to tell you so far and I'm almost finished so I think that everything on this uh, on this piece of furniture is so far so good um, I haven't had any problems with uh, misdrilled holes I did read in the comments that a few people said that they had misdrilled holes but then again you don't know um, for sure maybe they just had their pieces turned the wrong direction or something like that but so far uh, no misdrilled holes or anything and no missed holes I had a couple of little holes on the back that weren't drilled out for the uh, the back piece that goes on there just the back of it but I didn't use that piece anyway. That was the center piece and I didn't use it anyway. But those holes were not drilled. But this stuff is really easy to get holes started in if you just uh, put your screw there and just hit it a couple of times with your little hammer and it, uh, it'll actually get it started pretty good. So no problems so far. <laughs> we'll see how the rest goes. Okay, so this is where it gets a little bit tricky. If you don't get your hinges on there just right you know your door's not going to work so you want to make sure that you have your hinges turned right you got to make sure that your screws um, go into the indented part I can't remember for the life of me what that's called when you have a indention on something for it to make it go flush but you want to make sure that that is the outward part you want your screws to go flush or else they'll hold your doors open and now the tricky part is you got to get up here oh gosh I wish my camera was working better you got to get up here to where the holes are so what I'm gonna have to do is get me a little block or something and put down there to hold the door up high enough that I can screw it into there so that's what I'm gonna do is find something that I can just put under the door right there to hold it up as high as I need it to go so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Lucky okay, guys, I had the perfect solution. I had a, a red brick. It's just a regular old red brick. I turned it on its side and it perfectly lined up my bracket holes that I needed. So that was awesome. So if you got a red brick around the house or something the same size as a red brick, that would be perfect. And that gets your doors up exactly where you need them to be. So 
you, uh, if you have, you know, someone else working on it, you can always get them to to hold the door up. But I'm doing this by myself just to show that it can be done by yourself. And I even, uh, even with my my hand, um, with my um, my hand disability, I am not having any trouble whatsoever putting this together. Um, super simple to put together. Um, I have trouble with like small places, you know, getting my hand into small places because I can't bend my my little pinky the way. I mean, I can't straighten it out. <laughs> it's just permanently bent, and uh, it gets in the way if I'm working in small spaces. But this has been super easy to put together. And uh, my sister usually helps me put these kinds of things together, but I kind of wanted to do a video showing that one person could actually do it. So that's why I'm doing it by myself. Alright y'all, I got the doors on. They work. Open. The magnets on there. Everything looks good. So there we go. <laughs> Cut the doors on. One, two. Works great. Magnet holds. So that's awesome. So now all I got left to do is put the door handles on. And oh, the brick worked perfect. You guys, if you <laughs> if you're building one of these all by yourself and you need something to hold the door up while you're putting it on, a brick works just perfect. Uh, just on its side. Um, so I got those all done. Uh, one of the things you want to do too is when you're putting the hinges on the door, anytime you're putting hinges on a door or anything, don't tighten one really tight before you get the others in there. And then once you get them all lined up and get them all started good, then you can tighten them all in. But uh, to get your door hinges even and everything like that, um, don't tighten any of them too tight to begin with. Just a little tip. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> I got it all together. Got it plugged in back there in the back. And I think, um, I think I'm ready to try it out. Put all my stuff back on it. Try it out and let you see what it all looks like. It's a real mess in here right now. So <laughs> look at all this mess. <laughs> I'm certainly going to get it all cleaned up and get it all straightened up and I'll show you my little log cabin again okay y'all I finished up my project start over here at this side I got uh, this was my granny's old cuckoo clock from the black forest that I got her when I was in Germany several years ago and um, that's a little German uh, carving that I got also when I was in Germany loved Germany. It was so beautiful there. Um, I took my dream catcher down that was over there and I moved moved it over here up on the wall there on the rocks. So I got my dream catcher up here now. I can see it. It shows up better not on video. <laughs> shows up better in person. Uh, Jack. Uh, I brought my bull head in here. Got one of my Christmas trees there. Got a picture of my love. <laughs> Got there. A little teddy bear. A Shrek. Abominable snowman. And that little snowman right there got so scared that I think he might have made some yellow snow. Uh, he's a little bit scared of that abominable, I think. <laughs> I got me a, a, another tree over here. It's my other tree. And I got my little terrarium decorated with my little forest scene here. Not sure how the best way to see it would be. It's my angel. Got a little church on a hill. It's a little fence around it with some Christmas trees. And I use my grow lights to make that really pretty blue. Uh, I can also change it to pink or purple. And my little trees, those are some that I got at the Dollar Tree for when they were still a dollar. And they uh, they light up, they change color changing, and then I have a little gnome house there. So that's my little terrarium village. 
And there's all of my little critters, Mickey Mouse. Got a couple of vintage Mickey Mouses that were my mom's. Uh, actually, I think my granny, granny had them first. But uh, so there's my finished fireplace. It's very, very beautiful, I think. And it was simple to build. Like I said, I built it. You guys saw the video. <laughs> Has you see that I built it all by myself? And uh, it was fairly easy. Even with a hand handicap, I was still able to, to get it all built. And some more pictures of my love. One of my favorite pictures of him ever. It's when he was getting his captain classification. Yep, my fire truck. I need to get back to doing my uh, Friday Firehouse Friday, but I just have been busy with other stuff, and I'm working on getting a better better camera to film with because this one's getting really old and my other one doesn't film well inside and my phone when I film with it I have to like format to fit the program that I have and it always comes up looking small so but anyway there's my beautiful view out of my window <laughs> I'm actually gonna I have another project that I'm gonna be doing and I put some window slats on that to make it look like you're actually looking out of a window I've got more of the wood that I did the walls with and I have some styrofoam and I'm going to cut it in strips and then I'm going to glue the um, the wood on there and make it look like there's there's window slats and that's going to be a window and uh, this one over here is also going to be a window and I actually have a new uh, shower curtain coming I found one on Amazon that I really really like for like seven dollars so I'm going to be replacing this one with another Alaska scene. Uh, some painting or some drawings that I have done. And a um, picture of Denali up there that I took one of my photographs. I can't see it because of that light. Oh, <laughs> too short. Oh, there we go. Okay, yeah. It's one of my photos of Denali. Beautiful, beautiful mountain. Shaggy sleeping. Two more days till his 19th birthday. But yeah, it's, I love my, I love, love, love the fireplace. Uh, it did come with a remote control and you can control the flames or the heat. You can have it on just flames and there's three different levels of the flames and then um, you can have it on either with the temperature control or you don't have to have any heat on at all you can just have it as flames so um, and the heater I've had the heater on the heaters on right now getting shaggy warm he had the chills he just went out a little bit ago and got chills so I had the heater on for him just for a little while and uh, yeah it heats very very well and I like the little shelf there in the middle I've got my uh, Super Nintendo or N64 actually. Um, actually it's a little console that pay, plays either cartridges. It plays N64 and um, Super NES. So yeah, so all in all I think it looks pretty good. Um, let's see. I kind of like it the way I rearranged it now. It's a little close to the TV but it's actually perfect. The TV's perfect size, it's perfect height and um, it doesn't feel like you're that close to the TV. It's pretty awesome. And let's see, let me show you with the lights down lower. I get my I have one of those uh I have one of those lights up there that you operate with your phone. It's called a guinea monkey light or something like that. See I can actually adjust the the light down to that. Um I can Hold on just a second. I can't do this with my hand. I can do uh, different colors. There's uh, all the way down to the oranges. Orange. Oh, orange. <laughs> Red, I guess. And then you can do you can do any color that you want. Blues, purples, and then uh, orange. That's orange actually. And then you can, like I said, you can adjust the the brightness on it, you can make it lighter, darker, and it really adds a nice ambience to your room. Um, 
So let's see what color looks really nice. I think purple is one of my favorite colors. But uh, it's dark. Let's see the fireplace and the Christmas trees and the little snow village there. I think maybe you can see it even better with the light not on. This little church and everything. And Santa Claus, of course. And, uh, oh, this, this is pretty cool. That is actually an ostrich egg, and I had a hole in the bottom where they, you know, they drill it open. They drill a hole in the bottom to drain the, the insides out of it, and then they're, they're, um, they're super hard <laughs> eggs, and uh, they just get all the insides out of them. And then I had a friend that had a, a ostrich farm, and I got one of the eggs. And so what I did is I just took some little battery-operated lights and put in there, and. It looks like the moon to me, <laughs> but you can change it all different colors and everything, but I, I like it. It looks like a moon. And what else do I have to show you in my, in my room? I guess that's pretty much it. I just wanted to show you the finished product of the fireplace build and encourage you if you're thinking about getting um, something like that, but you're kind of reluctant on having to build it. Um, it's they're very simple that product is very simple to build I'm going to put the link of the actual name of what this fireplace is and uh, the link to where I got it off of Amazon and yeah so that's pretty much it I just wanted to share that with you and show you that uh, if I can build something like that <laughs> you can build something like that and uh, it's, it's really 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 beautiful and I just absolutely love it uh, my bed over there is awesome where it is because I can also see the fireplace from my bed and I can still get in my closet with ease I just have uh, my bed is just a blow up just a blow up um, mattress with uh, it's one of the nicer blow up mattresses you plug it into the wall and you push a button and it blows itself up <laughs> um, so I have that and then I have a four inch memory foam on top of that and it's the most super super comfortable bed and it's easy to move super light if I want to move it out of my way to vacuum under there or whatever I can just throw it up and stand it against the wall and vacuum and plop it back down there so the worst thing with that is you have to make sure that none of the tacks or anything falls out of the wall and ends up under your bed <laughs> but yeah so that's it so I'll go ahead and uh, get this video edited and, and put on YouTube for you guys to see. And I appreciate you watching. And I have some more stuff coming up. Like I said, I'm working on getting some, a different um, recording device. And hopefully um, I won't be quite so busy soon. I can just sit in front of the fireplace and relax and do some writing and things. Oh, I wanted to remind you too that remember I have three books that are published on Amazon. Um, under the author name Melody A. I have Itty Bitty The Little Kitty Goes to Heaven. I have Penny Petunia Possum's Tail Tale. And I have um, Hiram Raccoon's Great Movie Adventure. So go check those out if you would, please. I know that uh, Amazon right now, Kindle, is having a free two months uh, for digital reading. So you can actually go and read it for free if you got the two months trial um so yeah if you'd check that out that would be awesome i'd really appreciate that and uh, like i said i have some more videos coming up soon so thanks for watching and i appreciate every single one of you and love you all for being here and god bless all of you thanks for watching